the U.S. Embassy in Tbilisi is involved in the trafficking of human blood and pathogens as diplomatic cargo for a secret military program. Pentagon scientists are given diplomatic immunity to research deadly diseases and biting insects at a military laboratory in Georgia's capital, Tbilisi. Этот запах, этот дым, все, что идет красно-черный, зеленый, там это ночью, перед утром особенно, вот три часа, четыре. Выпускают все это ночью, чтобы люди не видели. Internal documents and correspondence between the Ministry of Health of Georgia and the U.S. Embassy to Tbilisi show what experiments have been conducted at the Luger Center. There's a strong smell of chemicals. This smell comes from the Luger Center at night, which is then spread by the wind to the residential areas. What is the need of military biolaboratories of the United States in 25 countries across the world? That's a good question. It's, That's always this is a public area. I can, uh, sorry, I can use the elevator. I can use the elevator. Sorry, not this one. This one's full. No, it is not full. Why is the Pentagon investing $65 million dollars for gene editing? Can you answer why? Okay. The Luger Center is a Pentagon biolaboratory in Georgia's capital, Tbilisi. It's located just 17 kilometers from the U.S. Vaziani military air base. The military biolaboratory is heavily guarded. All passers-by within a radius of 100 meters are being filmed, although the military biolaboratory is located in a residential area. Bulgarian journalist Diliana Getiniera has been investigating the Pentagon biolaboratories in 25 countries around the world, one of which is the Luger Center in Tbilisi. These U.S. biolaboratories are funded by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency under a $2.1 billion military program, known as the Cooperative Biological Engagement Program, and are located in former Soviet countries such as Georgia and the Ukraine, but also in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Africa. The Bulgarian reporter has been given rare access to internal memos and emails by Georgian insiders. She's being filmed while talking to local residents on a street near the Pentagon laboratory and wants to know why security guards are filming her. I'm behind the fence and I want to know why are you filming us? We were over there on the street talking with the local people and you started filming us. You know, you know what happened. You're violating our rights. Okay, please, one minute. You know what happened? Uh, our boss tell us, mm -hmm. if you know, show us your documents, uh, we can call patrol police. Please show your passports, okay? The Bulgarian reporter is being warned that if she doesn't comply, show her passport and leave this place, she will be arrested. However, she goes back at night, when the laboratory is seemingly still working. There's a strong smell of chemicals. This smell comes from the Luger Center at night, which is then spread by the wind to the residential areas. Этот запах, этот дым, все, что идет красно-черный, зеленый, там это ночью. Local residents from the Alexeevka neighborhood, where the laboratory is located, are not willing to talk on camera. Only a few of them are not afraid to speak up. 
Реал, моя голова болит. Иногда вот, когда выпускают вот это все, ветер обычно оттуда на нас идет. Вот запах тухлых яиц бывает, это что-то. Иногда вот такой, знаете, вот фиолетовый цвет выходит, иногда какой-то... Я один раз ночью, говорю, проснулся, утром уже светалось. Ну, смотрю оттуда, я оделся, подошел, ночью дым выпускают. От кого вы прячете? Тоже были случаи с филиппинцами. Они на квартире жили в 44-м корпусе, лабораторию, когда еще совсем не достроили. Был несчастный случай. Какой случай? Сейчас умерли люди, филиппинцы, вот эти двое. Двоих куда увезли, куда еще четверо их было. Ну, кто его знает, как случилось. Что-то они там работали, видимо, отравились. Чем-то, каким-то газом. Скажи, как вот эти вот отравились эти филиппинцы, все да, ну, мои, мои соседи филиппинцы на площадке жили. И один раз отравились они, позвали, нас попросили позвать скорую помощь, мы вызвали. Оклемались, сказали, вроде бы от рыбы отравились. А второй раз стучали, тоже просили о помощи. Там жило четыре филиппинца, два из них а, их откачали, а двое умерли. Вызвали, у них пена с арта шла, один кричал, help me, help me, кричал, все, а потом, когда умер, скоро увезли, и все это скрыли, все. Вот это, вот все это. Мы даже сдохли, вот когда даже вот этот, они, да, вот там, знаете, большую трубу они вложили, вот, под землей, и они канализационные свои трубы подсоединили с этой большой трубой. И, видимо, оттуда вот этот вонь, запах идет. Запах, знаете, вот яйцо, протухшего яйца и сена, когда вот гниет, вот такой запах идет. И ветер разносит в разные стороны. Вот эта вот улица идет, вот здесь вот закопали вот такие вот трубы, синие такие трубы, пластмассовые. И идет там пура наша река, там 3, 4, 5 километров, и от этой все туда сливается. Они не только воздух наш травят, но и воду тоже травят, вот эту вот. Здесь живут мои внуки, там внизу, они моих внуков травят, вот там вот, вот по этой вот улице. These internal memos have been provided by Georgian insiders on the condition that their identity remains hidden. Leaked correspondence from February of this year between the Pentagon and the Georgian Ministry of Health reveals that private American companies also perform work under the military program at the laboratory. This email, for instance, dated February 16, 2018, has been sent by an employee of a private contractor, TMC Global Professional Services, on behalf of the Pentagon unit at the Luger Center. To ask for a meeting with the Georgian Minister of Health, the private company has been awarded two contracts in 2016, totaling $3 million for support services at the Luger Center. Interestingly, the same year, TMC was also awarded another $975 million contract for counter-narco-terrorism by the Pentagon. Why is a company which works for the Pentagon on a worldwide program to counter narcotics has been given concurrently work at a military laboratory which burns chemicals at night? Local residents are worried about what chemicals are being burned secretly at night and what waste is being emptied into the river and causes the smell of rotten eggs in the residential area around the laboratory. <laughs> И все закрыто, охрана все. А чего вы боитесь? Если у вас все нормально, почему вы боитесь? Я помню один раз лично четырех труб одновременно дым шел днем. А потом днем перестали. Выпускают все это ночью, чтобы люди не видели. Ой, вы знаете, как плохо. Так да, эти да. запахи идут, специфические запахи вообще нас. Иногда так мучают, беспокоит ночью особенно. И потом еще после дождя тоже эти запахи вообще нас очень мучают. А кто а кого, кто спрашивает, мои хорошие, хорошие, кто нас спрашивает, мы маленький народ. Это засекреченная лаборатория, где проводятся как бы э, непонятные испытания, и нужно это, на это обратить внимание мировым. Internal documents and correspondence between the Ministry of Health of Georgia and the U.S. Embassy to Tbilisi 
show what experiments have been conducted at the Luger Center. Leaked documents reveal that the U.S. Embassy in Tbilisi transports pathogens, as well as frozen human blood samples, as diplomatic cargo. The American diplomats claim the human blood is needed for research purposes in connection with an American program on hepatitis C in Georgia. Diplomatic cargo shipments are exempt from inspection and taxes, according to instructions by the Pentagon's Defense Threat Reduction Agency, which oversees and funds the laboratories. Biological material for the needs of the program must be shipped as hand-carrying items to the U.S. embassies. In the case of import to Russia, the biological material must be carried by diplomats in a diplomatic pouch and sealed as diplomatic cargo. Other instructions to U.S. personnel working under the military program prohibit the use of prostitutes, as foreign security services are known to use the enticement of such relations to exploit foreign officials, the document reads. Tasked with the program are biologists from the U.S. Army Medical Research Unit, Georgia, along with private American contractors and the U.S. Center for Disease Control. Certain zones of the laboratory are classified zones and are accessible only to American citizens with security clearance. They are accorded diplomatic immunity under the 2002 U.S.-Georgia Agreement on Defense Cooperation. Joshua Bast is deputy director of the U.S. Army Medical Research Unit, Georgia. The American military scientist drives a diplomatic car and enjoys diplomatic immunity without being a diplomat. Joshua Bast is an entomologist and researches insects, according to a video released by the U.S. Embassy to promote the peaceful purposes of the otherwise military program of the U.S. in Georgia. Why does an entomologist work for the U.S. Army, and why is he accorded with diplomatic immunity? Entomological warfare is a type of biological warfare that uses insects to transmit diseases. Georgia borders on the U.S. main rival Russia. Moscow has repeatedly voiced concerns about the potential development of biological weapons near Russian borders, including the spread of diseases through insects. Понятно, что в таких центрах могут проводиться исследования не только в интересах санитарно-эпидемиологического благополучия населения соседних с нами государств, поэтому сам факт масштабной медико-биологической деятельности Пентагона именно у границ России вызывает у нас особое беспокойство. Возникает законный вопрос об истинных целях такой военно-биологической активности Соединенных Штатов Америки. Such fears are not groundless, considering a recent U.S. patent for a toxic mosquito aerial release system granted by the United States Patent and Trademark Office in 2014. The invention includes a drone that can release infected mosquitoes. According to the patent documents, it is capable of delivering lethal and non-lethal toxins, including an agent that can be carried and administered by a mosquito. The inventor of the drone for releasing the toxic mosquitoes, S. Mill Calvert, has patented 42 similar military inventions for the U.S. Army and Special Forces, including stroke-inducing bullets 
in a span of just two years from 2013 to 2015. A person with such a name, however, does not exist in the U.S. Citizens Registry. The U.S. patent lawyer, Louis Ventre, who filed the application, declined to comment on if the name was a pseudonym and who his client actually was. Documents show a number of Pentagon projects involving insects as possible vectors of diseases in Georgia. In 2014, the Luger Center was equipped with an insect facility and launched a project on sand flies in Georgia in the Caucasus. In 2014 to 2015, sand fly species were collected under another project, surveillance work on acute febrile illness, and all female sand flies were tested to determine their infectivity rate. A third project, including sand flies collection, studied the characteristics of their salivary glands. I have really a very serious uh, concerns that nobody in the government in reality knows what is going on inside. Because, uh, as I know, uh, in uh, general, uh, in some places, because there are some, as I understand, there are some different levels in, inside of this object, there are some levels where, where Georgians have an access and they are working, but there are some levels where Georgians have no access. And of course, uh, it's not normal when uh, there is some uh, serious object in your country where uh, citizens of your country have no access. Uh, uh, exception could be only uh, diplomatic uh, representation and embassies, which is normal for uh, international law and for every country, but not uh, with secret objects which exist. Uh, I think this, is, uh, this should be a matter of our concern. The Pentagon scientists have performed experiments involving tropical mosquitoes and ticks in Georgia. 21,590 ticks were collected for DNA databasing for future studies at the Luger Center under the Pentagon project, Genetic Diversity of Crimean Congo Hemorrhagic Fever Virus and Hantaviruses in Georgia. The Pentagon projects involving ticks coincide with an inexplicable outbreak of Crimean Congo Hemorrhagic Fever, which is caused by infection through a tick-borne virus. In 2014 alone, 34 people became infected, along with a four-year-old child, four of which died. A total of 60 cases and nine fatalities have been registered in Georgia since 2009. According to leaked emails between Luger Center Director Amaran Gamkrelids and Minister of Health of Georgia, David Serginko, these worrying statistics have been hidden from the public. Joshua Bast is not the only U.S. non-diplomat working on the Pentagon program who has been accorded diplomatic immunity. There are five diplomatic cars in the car park of the laboratory, all of them with registration plates of the U.S. Embassy. U.S. civilian personnel performing work at the Luga Center have also been given diplomatic immunity, including diplomatic vehicles, although they are not diplomats. This practice is often used by the CIA to provide cover for its agents. what foreigners with uh, diplomatic status are doing at the Luga Center. There is no need of control if you are doing things together. I mean, what, what, what's the application of any diplomatic status there? Uh, I don't see any point, uh, sorry. It's a diplomatic status because of uh, the living conditions here, but it has nothing to do with the, uh, with the work. Any diplomatic status or whatever type of the protection the diplomat enjoy uh, has nothing to do with whatever work is done in the Luger Center. The Defense Threat Reduction Agency has outsourced much of the work under the military program to private companies. 
which are not accountable to Congress and which can operate more freely and move around the rule of law. Leaked documents show that one of the companies involved in the program in Georgia is Booz Allen Hamilton. In June 2013, Edward Snowden, at the time a Booz Allen employee contracted to projects for the National Security Agency, publicly disclosed details of the classified mass surveillance and data collection programs of the U.S. around the world. Snowden's former employer, Booz Allen Hamilton, has been awarded five lucrative contracts by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency since 2010 until 2022, totaling at least $358 million for intelligence support services. You know, if these people are against the country, they're against the government, this is something that's not our place to decide. The public needs to decide whether these programs and policies are right or wrong. The Pentagon scientists can work in direct violation of international law. Under a three-year agreement between the Walter Reed's Army Institute and the Georgian National Center for Disease Control, the Pentagon has been given full access to the local collection of deadly bioagents in order to study them. These are agents which can cause anthrax, tularemia, brucella, and the plague. According to the agreement's provisions, international law is not applicable to this agreement. The parties agree that no court, tribunal, or international entity has jurisdiction or authority to consider or provide judgment. Bulgarian reporter Diliana Getinjera asked the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Health, Robert Kadlec, for a comment during a conference on biological weapons at the European Parliament in Brussels and was immediately expelled from the conference. Why has the Pentagon been operating military pilot laboratories in 25 countries, bordering on the U.S. Uh, main rivals, Russia, China, and Iran? And why has the number of deadly outbreaks in all those countries increased dramatically since the start of the military program of the United States in these countries? Um, I will just say unequivocally and undeniably, the U.S. does not have a military biological weapons program. Period. End of statement. Uh, can Number you... two, we have been working, and I do know for the Department of Defense, they've been working with partners in parts of the world to ensure that those laboratories, and we train them on how to do diagnostic tests on these diseases, to ensure that they can manage them and also safely secure those pathogens so they're not accessible by terrorists or by criminals who would do ill with them. While all these projects classified information, all these biolaboratories uh, of the Pentagon in 25 countries across the world, why are they classified information? They're, they're not classified. They're openly uh, available to anyone who wants to look at them. No, I tried to. Uh, okay, okay, okay. No, this is not true. They're classified think... information. No, no, no. You had why? your chance. It's not an investigation here. I'm very why sorry. Why are you talking about uh, but Of about course, but the, I will not let you. Why can't I we talk will not about give you the word like this. We, we try to answer your questions, but that's not the place. Case closed. Thank you very much. What is the need of military biolaboratories of the United States in 25 countries across the world? Can't answer that question. It's, That's not his capacity. This is public area. I can. Uh, sorry, I can use the elevator. I can use the elevator. Sorry, not this one. This one's full. No, it is not full. Please, I can use the elevator. I can use the elevator. Come. No more questions, then. Why not? Okay, we're either going down. Why is the Pentagon investing $65 million dollars in gene editing? I'm sorry. The gene editing is part of these programs. Can you answer why? No, Documents reveal some of the projects funded by the Pentagon, among them projects related to Russia. The U.S. Air Force has been specifically collecting Russian RNA and synovial tissue samples, raising fears in Moscow of a covert U.S. ethnic bioweapons program. You know that biological material is collected all over the country, and by different ethnic and people who live in different geographic points of the Russian Federation. Вот the question, what do they do? They do it properly and professionally. We 
такой вот объект очень большого интереса. The Pentagon has also studied the Russian anthrax strain at the Luger Center, for which Russia has a vaccine, as well as the genome sequence of the Russian Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus strain. Leaked emails between the director of the Luger Center and the Minister of Health of Georgia, David Serginko, reveal an ongoing Pentagon project on Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever in the country. The Minister of Health of Georgia, David Serginko, did not respond to the questions sent via email by Diliana Ketanyara. The leaked emails, though, show the minister's reaction to this question. He has forwarded the email to his press center, swearing at the journalist in Georgian. Who the is she, and where did she get my email from? Coincidentally, the journalist was locked up in the bedroom of her rented flat in Tbilisi while sleeping and was freed by emergency services who accessed the locked room through the roof. The police have no answer as to who had broken into the flat, locked the journalist in, and why, given that nothing had been stolen. I'm behind the fence, and I want to know why are you filming us? Probably someone doesn't want journalists to investigate what chemicals are secretly burned at night in the Pentagon-funded laboratory and why a private contractor on a Pentagon program to combat narcotics happens to work also at the same laboratory.